I'm a city boy. I grew up in Barranquilla, which is the capital district of Atlantico in the country of Colombia. Barranquilla is located near the Caribbean Sea and is one of the largest cities in the country and is the second port in the Northern Caribbean coast. As of 2018, it had a population of well over 1,200,000 people. That's about five times the size of the population of Orlando, making it Colombia's fourth most populous city, which in essence, or rather, what I'm trying to tell you is that I grew up in a jungle of asphalt and concrete, and I know nothing about country or farming or how to grow things. In fact, and if you can remember, think about those videos that I made for you last year, where I show you how unsuccessful I was at growing vegetables in the backyard. I think we planted tomatoes and peppers and some sweet snap peas, and the only thing I grew was blisters and back soreness. Now, I have to say, that while initially the whole thing felt like I wasted a bunch of time, I gotta admit that I learned a valuable lesson on rhythms, routines, and hardships, and the reality of the agricultural life. The whole thing gave me a glimpse on the disappointment and the delights of farming, which is the setting for our text this morning. Now, today we're going to read Matthew 13, verse 1 to 9, which is known as the parable of the farmer scattering the seed. However, and before reading the gospel lesson of this morning, or hearing it, we will do well to remember that parables are simple stories. Again, simple stories used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson, which do not carry their meaning or significance on the surface, but demand, through analysis and perception, if they hear it, in this case you, wants the benefit from it. Something important about these parables is that while they are simple stories, they do not treat simple matters. Instead, they are loaded with challenges, and they are given to us, to us as children of God, as a response to the increasing opposition and rejection that Jesus experienced and continues to experience from the institutions and religious leaders and from this generation. Read Matthew 12, verse 38 to 45 to see what I mean by this. In the end, the dichotomy of these simple stories. Dichotomy being the fancy word to say the clash or struggle within the text is we're being asked to choose if we, the audience, are we for or against Jesus and the kingdom that he proclaims. So that being said, let us prepare our minds, our hearts, our ears, and everything that we are to listen to the wonderful message inspired by God for us, the people of God. Matthew chapter 13. On that day, after Jesus went out of the house, he sat by the lake, and such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat to sit while the whole crowd stood on the shore. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly because the soil was not deep, but when the sun came up, they were scorched, and because they did not have sufficient root, they withered. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and they grew up and choked them. But other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundred times as much, some sixty and some thirty. The one who has ears 
had better listen. So let me begin by saying that Matthew 13 marks a significant shift in the gospel narrative. Jesus is now out of the house, verse 1, and about to embark on his third great teaching act. There are a total of five teaching acts within the gospel of Matthew, the teaching gospel. The third act begins on verse 1 and goes all the way to verse 53 of the same chapter. In our parable of this morning, the sower, just like Jesus, goes out of the house and gathers the tools and the tasks for the day. This parable, in its most basic sense, gets us thinking about the types of people and how receptive they are to Jesus' message. Many welcomed Jesus' teaching. However, others rejected his message. Some understood but did not believe, and others believed but they were easily persuaded by power and fame. And so, in essence, people heard Jesus in different ways, and some corners of the field, creation, the world, proved more receptive than others. Now, there is a more in-depth understanding of this parable given to us by the ground, by the background of the previous chapters 11 and 12. Given this background, we can understand that our parable of this morning has three actions that calls us to reflection. They are sowing, growing, and listening. The first one, sowing. We read that the farmer in the parable sows the seed with wild abandon and really doesn't have a really good aim. The seed goes everywhere on the path and in the thorny patch and in the rocking ground and in the rich soil. However, it is hard to tell if this description of the sower, the farmer, is meant to be realistic. I mean, why would a farmer, in times of Jesus, where the seeds were very valuable and scarce, behave in such a way? Wasting three or three-fourths of the seeds, knowing that by any world standards, that would be bad for business. Or perhaps, 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 that is exactly the point. Maybe it was Jesus making the straightforward point that the farmer's task is always a random and unpredictable aspect. Jesus was teaching us that you must use the land that you have, the people that you have, the church that you have, with all the good and bad soils lie side by side. And that all of your efforts will not be successful or bring forth fruit, but only one thing fourth of it, maybe. Now, the second element that we can explore is growing and how we must consider that the growing aspects of farming include the land, terrain, or soil, but also the grace and blessing of the Creator. If not, how many times have you heard the story of the freeze of 1980? or especially the freeze of 1989 around Christmas, where so many citrus trees die at the hands of the worst winter season known to Florida that wiped out more than 117 trees, according to an article of Orlando Sentinel of 2014, which was celebrating 25 years since that catastrophe. The third element, that we ought to explore is listening, which is critical since the parable ends with the final command and let anyone with ears listen. Verse 9. The key lesson here is listening to Jesus' teaching. Just as many commentators have said, our ears are to our faith what rich soil is to a seed. In here, we are invited to listen in the midst of all the noise. In our busy 24-7 social media dominated world, we are often distracted, unaware, and even resistant 
to the teaching of Christ? Are we so occupied by worldly concerns that we, that the weeds of our culture choke out the gospel for us? Do we listen too closely to others than to pay attention to the voice of the Lord who calls us each day? That's a lot of to consider. And yet that is not the totality of the lesson today. See, first thing that you heard was the sermon that it was developed on Tuesday. And then what you heard about the three elements later was what was developed on Thursday. And what I'm about to tell you now was planted late on Friday night before going to bed and after putting the kids to sleep. Church, listen. You're not simply the dirt to be used, and you are not to become fertile ground by your own doing, frightening the birds away and picking up the stones or plucking out the weeds of the thorn by your own power. Church, you gotta remember that you are the most precious thing for the farmer, for God. You are the thing that the farmer purchased at a very special time and high price with the life and the blood of the only begotten son of the farmer. You are the seed and God is telling you today that you are the seed that will change everything, that you are not a regular seed. You are not a whatever seed. You are not a wasted seed. That you, that you are the most special seed and while not everyone lands in fertile ground to grow perfectly we can all prosper not because of the soul but because of the will and grace and work and miracle of God church the promise is that despite our struggles despite the setbacks God will fulfill God's purpose in you and through you and so we are more than seeds we are children of god the whole thing is denser than that now remember what i told you parables are crafted to draw us with the hope to engage in a never-ending conversation with the storyteller where inside patience and perhaps a lot of effort are needed, open-minded, are needed to grasp the point behind the lesson. And so as you remember that you are the seed, let me wake you up to the reality that your role is to produce fruit as a farmer and process that that we call discipleship. Where, how, and when have you initiated the process of discipleship in times of COVID-19? Well, Mario, I'm just trying to stay afloat, survive. Well, you got to know that discipleship does not only happen in perfect conditions or after careful planning or flawless environment. You got to remember, church, that in our story, the farmer, the farmer could have mapped out the land, determined where the best soil was and plant it there. However, the story emphasizes the disorder and remind us that good farming like good discipleship is found somewhere in between decency, order, and God incidences that we cannot control. Church, we got to remember that God isn't asking us to be perfect. God is asking us to be faithful. God is inviting us to be like the farmer, to invest, to take risks, and to scatter the seeds of God for the glory of Jesus' name. And so, may we all know the vast, vast difference between planting a seed and burying them. Amen.